Hi, Anton. That's Catherine Varner here. Thank you so much for inviting me to EM Cases. And today, my EM Cases quick hit is on peripartum cardiomyopathy. This is not a condition we often see in the emergency department, but it's one that I want you to consider when you're seeing a patient in the third trimester or the postpartum period who's coming in with shortness of breath or worsening lower extremity swelling. The case I'm going to tell you about Describe some of the diagnostic considerations as well as the management of patients with peripartum cardiomyopathy. So let's get into the case. This is a 35-year-old female who's six days following a normal spontaneous vaginal delivery, and she's coming in to your department with shortness of breath and lower extremity swelling. She had a relatively normal pregnancy and delivery, and since then, she's had increasing swelling in her lower extremities and shortness of breath in the last 48 hours. And what brought her into the emergency department now is that she can't even walk without feeling short of breath. Her vitals show that she is slightly tachycardic with a heart rate of 102, blood pressure 98 on 55, a respirator of 24, and an O2 sat of 94%. And she looks exhausted. Her cardiovascular exam is otherwise normal. Her chest is clear, except for she has decreased air entry to the bases and she has bilateral three plus lower extremity edema. This is the type of patient who might want in a monitored setting with oxygen early on in the course. This is not somebody I'd want hanging out in the waiting room waiting for a bed. With two liters of oxygen, her, her O2 sat comes up to 96% and her vitals otherwise remain the same. So some of the diagnostic considerations, as most of us, I think, would be thinking this patient likely has a PE, includes what type of blood work should we do? In addition to a D-dimer, in this patient, I would also do a BNP and a troponin. Patients who have normal pregnancies should not have elevations in their BNP. BNP is both sensitive and specific for peripartum cardiomyopathy in the peripartum or postpartum patient. So it can be helpful in making a diagnosis for this patient. Patients with peripartum cardiomyopathy can also have mild elevations in their troponin as well as D-dimer. But making the diagnosis of peripartum cardiomyopathy does not exclude the diagnosis of PE. And in fact, these patients are at higher risk a venous thromboembolism than your typical patient in the postpartum period. So even though you've made the diagnosis of peripartum cardiomyopathy based on the BNP, you still need to go forward and do a CT to exclude PE to make sure that they don't have both diagnoses. The next test we should discuss is whether or not to do a chest x-ray first or just do the CT. I would advocate doing a chest x-ray first in patients who are short of breath in the postpartum period may save a patient the radiation of a CTPE. There have been several times in my career where I've made the diagnosis based on a chest x-ray of either peripartum cardiomyopathy or a pneumothorax in the postpartum period in a patient who came in dyspneic. The management of patients with peripartum cardiomyopathy, according to the Canadian Cardiovascular Society, is the same as for any patient with acute heart failure. Your target oxygen saturation is 92%. And if you can't achieve that with oxygen or diuresis, then you're going to start looking at other options like CPAP or BiPAP. And if all else fails, you need to mechanically ventilate them early. If they're volume overloaded, your diuretic of choice is furosemide using 20 to 80 milligram boluses. In this patient, we chose 40 milligrams IV which helped with the diuresis and improved her oxygen saturation. Your next steps are going to be based on what her systolic blood pressure is. So you can consider a vasopressor if she's hypotensive, but if her mean arterial pressure is 65 or more, you can consider nitroglycerin IV. From there, we need to involve our cardiologists. These patients need to be at a tertiary care center because their risk of decompensation is very high. In North America, the mortality rate of peripartum cardiomyopathy is 2%, and worldwide it can be as high as 13%. So having a patient with peripartum cardiomyopathy 
and a place that can manage a decompensation quickly is really important. To summarize, this patient had peripartum cardiomyopathy. It was diagnosed on a chest x-ray and a BNP. She did go on to have a CT to exclude a PE because her D-dimer was elevated. And we know that patients with peripartum cardiomyopathy are still at high risk of venous thromboembolism. These patients would be advised to not conceive again in the future because their risk of recurrence is extremely high. So thanks so much for having me on EM Cases and good luck on your next shift. So interesting about BNP, which I had all but abandoned in the ED after doing a Journal Jam podcast on it and concluding that it was pretty much useless for acute heart failure. But the literature we looked at for the Journal Jam did not include pregnant and postpartum patients. So that's very valuable information for me. I suppose BNP does have a role in the ED for peripartum patients with shortness of breath. <laughs> 